Hello everybody. I'm doing a lot of point and shoots, so I thought I would get back to something a little meatier. We have the Konica Auto Reflex TC. Production began in 1976. Uh, sites vary about how long it ran, two or three years at least. Um, it's a shutter priority or full manual SLR uses a copal vertically traveling metal shutter. Um, the range is a little bit limited on the slow side. It goes from one eighth of a second to one thousandth of a second plus bulb. It uh, uses center weighted uh, dual cadmium sulfide sensors. They're up in the uh, pentaprism for through the lens metering. Uh, it shows the metered aperture, not what you have the lens set to along the right side of the uh, of the viewfinder with a needle and there's red for overexposure at the bottom of the viewfinder and underexposure at the top and it depending on which lens you have attached as long as it's uh, one of the EE or sometimes they're called AE lenses um, it'll actually adjust the red zone at the top so this one's the 1.7 so it'll be really small if you had an f2.8 lens the red zone would be a little longer it's kind of a cool system um, the auto exposure uh, locks it with a half press so if something's backlit you can get up close meter it half press and then recompose uh, your picture viewfinder is pretty bright it has a nice uh, easy to use split image uh, in the center that's surrounded by a matte field and then it has a bigger circle that's I forget what it's called it looks like ground glass and then uh, the rest of the viewfinder will just you know become blurry so you can use you know the whole thing if you're using something that's uncoupled or bellows extension something like that that's going to make the split image and the and the micro prism really dim it was powered originally by two 1.35 volt mercury batteries. Um, I used 1.4 volt zinc air hearing aid batteries. Seemed to have mer uh, metered uh, pretty well. I maybe could have gone a little bit higher with the exposure, but all in all, things were pretty well exposed. Um, to shoot, the film wind has to be in this standoff position. That enables the metering and also allows you to press uh, the shutter button. To turn it back off, there's this little button underneath the winder. You can't just push it back, so don't force it. If you move the lens off of the auto exposure setting here, and most of these hexanons have a little button to get them off the auto exposure, there's a little red flag that comes down in the upper left of the viewfinder to let you know you have to set everything manually. It's not shooting in shutter priority auto exposure. This has a pretty sweet lens. It's got the uh, Hexanon AR 50 millimeter 1.7. Uh, it's one of the later ones. The early ones apparently had half stop steps on here. This one doesn't. But the later ones are supposed to be a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter while keeping the same geometry. Uh, six elements in five groups. It's not as famous as the little pancake, the 40 millimeter f1.8, or some of the super fast, the uh, 50 millimeter f1.4, and then it was an oddball. I think it was 57 millimeters was available in f1.2, but it's a super super sharp lens. Uh, it stops down to f16, so if you're shooting fast film and bright light, it doesn't stop down tiny tiny. So you might have to use uh, an ND filter has a hot shoe plus it still has a uh, PC cord socket here on the left side of the camera um, it's X-Sync only it, it, uh, the manual mentions um, using bulbs but everything syncs at 1 125th of a second or slower they say uh, one thing is kinda cool if you use the self timer and depending on where you put it um, it's either, they say it's 4 to 10 seconds, 
But what it does when you press the uh, shutter button with the self timer immediately locks up the mirror. Film settings are from ISO 25 to 1600. A uh, decent range for a camera from the late 70s. The back catch that opens the film compartment is this little slider on the side. So don't try and lift up on the rewind. It's not going to go up. But it's pretty nice. It has this cutout down here on the supply side. So the film will just drop out since you can't pull the prongs out of the film cartridge. Um, I shot with some Tri-X 400 current film for a change and I got pretty sweet results using this guy. I really really like it. Um, the TC has somewhat lower specs and uses more plastic. Um, the top plate and pinch prism, the bottom plate are both plastic. A little bit lower spec than others in the T series which are really well known, really famous cameras. But it's smaller and it's lighter and it uses the same lenses. Um, another great thing, um, if your batteries go dead, everything in this camera, except for the meter obviously, still works. So this is a rugged survivor. It's a really cool camera. Took it on a trip to LA. Really, really enjoyed just dorking around, kind of street shooting with it. I liked it a lot. So I'll probably shoot with this guy again. Got some catching up to do with a couple other cameras, but I'll see you then.